Section 2.2 is about histograms. Um, these are related to the bar graphs that we saw in section 2.1, but my, my definition here really is just the difference. A histogram consists of contiguous rectangles. In a bar graph, rectangles were, were, there was space between them. They were separate. These are contiguous. Another word for that is uh, adjoining or adjoined side by side uh, or yeah just side by side well i really like the the phrase shoulder to shoulder because things can be side by side but still have space between them like the bar graph but no space between them uh, we'll see what that looks like uh, in our first example but uh, before we get to that um, these are just other ways to say continue Let's look at the structure that we're going to use for the histogram. It's actually just like the line graph for frequency polygon or the bar graph that we saw before. But to be clear, the x-axis is going to represent uh, data values. Uh, what do we say? Data value or class is another way to do it because we can do this with data classes, uh, uh, categories. Um, data interval or an interval of data values is another way to do that, which is going to be in our example. So that's great. So uh, data interval is the name for that thing. The x-axis consists of data intervals. The y-axis, as before, is the frequency of that data value or data interval value or class, the frequency uh, or relative frequency. So one or the other of those. And the, the thing is though, it, it doesn't really matter that much which one you do, the frequency or the relative frequency, they look the same relative to each other. The, the graph would look the same. It would just be labeled a little bit differently if we did frequency versus relative frequency. That again would be our, our percentages. Um, okay, so a, a couple more things about this. The, the symbols and variables that we're going to use to do this. F is the frequency. So f is the, the value of the frequency. It's going to change depending on which class uh, that we're looking at, but it's the number in a class, or the number in the data interval, or the number of that, that specific data value. Uh, the data value itself is what we call x, but how many there are, the frequency is what we call f. And it's going to go on the y-axis, but I'm not going to call it y. I'm going to call it f for frequency. Uh, also, n, and this is pretty standard throughout statistics and even a lot in math. When you have a number of things, you use the, the letter n to represent that number. So that's just the uh, total number of values. Total number of values in all the classes, in all the different data intervals. Now, the, the relative frequency, relative frequency is something we're, we're still uh, exploring. Uh, the book calls it RF sometimes for relative frequency. I, I like to call it rel freak, uh, relative frequency, but for writing purposes, if you just write rel freak, it's sufficient. But it's, it's equal to the frequency for, for that particular data value or that particular data interval divided by the total number of data values. That's the, the percentage that have that particular data value. So relative frequency 
is like a scaled version of frequency. We divide it by n, divided by the total number. Total number. And um, I've got one more note about this before we start an example where we'll build our own histogram. Uh, the number of classes, not the number of values, that's, that's n, it's the total number of individuals or whatever, uh, the number of classes that we divide them up into, uh, that is equal to the number of intervals, and that is equal to the number of bars in our histogram. So we're not making a bar graph with the separate bar pieces, but histogram still is made of bars. Uh, that's the, num the number of bars is the same as the number of classes, or the, the number of data intervals. So next I've got an example where we'll have a data set. We're going to uh, organize it. Oh, it's in order. It's already in order. That's good. It's already partially organized, but we're going to organize it further so that we can make a histogram. So this example says the number of employees at a sample of restaurants. in New York City. Oh, that's not really a sentence, but uh, that's what the data represents. So each data value is one restaurant. How many employees does that restaurant have? Well, the, you know, the smallest one is 15, the largest one is 42. We'll get, we'll get to the, the data in just a second. The directions here are to create a histogram uh, using uh, 10 to 19 as the first interval. Yeah, okay. So it doesn't say how many intervals I should have. It doesn't say how many how big the intervals are. It says how big this one is. I'm going to make the rest of them like the, this is for restaurants that have 10 to 19 employees. The next one I'm going to do 20 to 29 employees and then 30 to 39 employees. Let's take a look at the actual data. Um, so uh, there are 22 numbers here, so it's kind of a long list. I'm going to break it into uh, two rows of 11 make it a little bit easier, but uh, so here's my data, 15, 18, 19, then 20, 20, uh, 22, 22, 22, 24, 25, 26, 27, Uh, and then, so that should be 11, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28, 29, 30, 31, 32, 33, 34, 35, 36, 37, 38, 39, 40, 41, 42, 43, 44, 45, 46, 47, 48, 49, 50, 51, 52, 53, 54, 55, 56, 57, 58, 59, 60, 61, 62, 63, 64, 65, 66, 67, 68, 69, 70, 71, 72, 73, 74, 75, 76, 77, 78, 79, 80, 81, 82, 83, 84, 85, 86, 87, 88, 89, 90, 91, 92, 93, 94, 95, 96, 97, 98, 99, 100, 101, 102, 103, 104, 105, 106, 107, 108, 109, 110, 111, 112, 112, 40, 42. And if you need to pause and get that, make sure you've got that if you want to double check. Uh, that should be, since I did put 12 here, this should be 10 of them. 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. Yeah. So this is uh, n equals 22. 
because the number of data points are 22. Now, to build a histogram, uh, I'm going to call so my first my first interval is going to be 10 to 19. That's going to include all three of these. So I'm not going to have 22 bars. Um, if I do my bars of size of data interval size 10, like this is 10 numbers here. If you start from 10 and count to 19, that's 10 numbers. I know the difference isn't 10, but we've got 10. Uh, th this is a discrete quantitative data set. You can only have a whole number of employees. You can't have a half person working there. Uh, anyway, uh, what we're going to do, though, is divide this into data intervals of size 10 uh, here, going all the way up to uh, 29 would bring me here. So that's the 20s, the 30s up to here, and then the 40s. So I'm going to go back again and count the number of data intervals I need. Uh, first one for the teens, then the 20s, that's two, then the 30s, that's three, and the 40s. That's, so four data intervals, and yeah, that's what my... So I'm about to transfer this, really summarizing this data to make it even more manageable um, by putting it into a frequency table with the class and the frequency. Uh, the first class is uh, 10 to 19. That's how they instructed me to start. And kind of the obvious way to proceed is go to 20, to 29. It's not totally obvious, but it's it's a pattern that they've given me that I can continue. Uh, you could separate this da data into intervals of size, intervals of width five, and get a more accurate picture, I guess, but this will do for this example. 30 to 39, 40 to 49. And now the frequency of restaurants in this class, the frequency of restaurants that have between 10 and 19 employees is three in this data set. The frequency of the 20 to 29 interval, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11 restaurants that have between 20 and 29 employees, uh, one, two, three, four, five restaurants that have between 30 and 39, and three restaurants that have between 40 and 49 employees. Uh, now, I'm going to do this with this table. It has nothing to do with what we're trying to do, but I'm going to add up these frequencies. And they add up to 22. And that's good. That means I didn't miss anything because, remember, we counted the numbers. There were 22. The total number of uh, the total sum of the frequencies is 22. That's just to check. What we really want is these four numbers here to build our histogram. Uh, so I, I really start by drawing the x-axis usually. I just uh, start there. We're going to have the, uh, let's put it here for 10 to 20 to 30 to 40. 50, but between the 10 and the 20, that's my 10 to 19 rectangle, and it should have a height of 3. Before I draw that, though, I want to make sure I've got enough room to build the whole, make sure this is tall enough. And so I look to my highest frequency of 11. I need to have a rectangle that goes all the way up to 11. Uh, if, if you put, uh, like, Two, four, six, eight, ten, twelve. That's enough. That's enough space. Uh, my first one, though, this is going by two, four, six. Uh, my first one should be three high, so the top of my first rectangle should be at three. There's my first data interval, my first rectangle. The next one is going to be much taller. The next one's going to be up at 11. Uh, this is a little bit easier with lined paper, but 
again, lined paper, you usually don't have vertical lines. You just have to take your time. That, that's not too bad. Uh, so that one's 11 tall. The next one should be five tall. Frequency is five. And the next one should be three, which is the same height as the first one. So there's my histogram. Uh, I'm going to label that actually. You notice the rectangles are side by side, and this is actually a, a significant and kind of a deep, uh, meaningful way to graph something. Is what we're going to see later in the semester is that this area underneath has a meaning in terms of uh, statistics and probability. Um, what I just did was a, a, a histogram for frequency. If I had done this for uh, relative frequency, I'm not sure I want to mark this. That's a little better. Uh, if I had done this for relative frequency, I would have divided each of these frequencies by 22 to get a, a decimal that I could change into a percent. And I could do, uh, well, uh, for, for example, uh, 11 is half of 22. Half of these restaurants are in this interval. This would be a 50%. Up at 50% would be my rel relative frequency, 0.5. These other ones would be smaller, but the shape would be exactly the same. The only difference would be the labels along the frequency axis. Instead of a frequency axis here, I would have a relative frequency axis.